All right, let's look at this rectangular prism. And uh, many of you are already familiar with finding the volume of this prism. And if we look at this, uh, let's look at this bottom one here is, uh, we'll call this the length. And then we will consider this diagonal here, we'll call that the width. And then this will be the height for this one. And of course, uh, with the rectangular prism, it doesn't matter which one we label which, okay? Now, we're going to cut this up here in just a moment, but uh, let's first figure out the volume of this. So, it should be the length times the width times the height, okay? Now, uh, let's go and make a point right here in the center of the top, and we're going to cut this uh, from that point to each corner. So, let's see how that looks. All right, so we connect that point to each of the bottom corners of this rectangular prism. And now what's nice is if we take off the rest of these, so for example, if I were to look at uh, the original rectangular prism, and let's say that I were to remove these sides, okay? Now, remember, a lot of this, uh, our, our measurements still stay the same, okay? Now, uh, the only thing is now, uh, it's going to change our volume, of course, but uh, how does it change the volume? Well, if we were to look at the original prism and uh, compare it to this pyramid now, and this would be a rectangular pyramid, uh, its volume is just uh, the original volume of this as though it were a rectangular prism, the only difference is now it's divided by 3, okay? So, in other words, a pyramid is only a third of its original uh, prism. Now, this is for rectangular prisms, uh, but for triangular prisms, it's going to be just a little bit different. So, let's look at the original uh, once again. Alright, so here's our original and uh, the volume of this rectangular prism is length times width times height. Of course, that's the basis for pretty much all of these shapes, okay? Now, let's say that we wanted to make this a triangular prism. So what we would want to do, or have to do, is cut this in half. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I put the two slice marks in there, but let's get rid of the rest of the garbage there. All right, so this is what we have. We've got this triangular prism now. And so, remember that uh, in comparison to its original rectangular prism, the volume of this is just half of that uh, rectangular prism. Uh, but let's go ahead and make this a pyramid, just like we did with uh, the last rectangular prism. And uh, let's see uh, what that looks like. So let's go ahead and find the middle here. And then we'll connect that point to all the corners. Alright, so we've connected that point to all the corners of that original prism. Uh, and let's look. Let's look now and see how does that affect our equation or our formula up here. Well, it's going to affect the prism the same way that the last pyramid did. And that was that, remember, all we did was we took that original equation and just divided it by 3. Uh, and let's simplify this so that it looks at least a little bit more manageable. So this is our formula right now. And if you remember, this is uh, just a complex fraction. We've got length times width times height divided by 2. And this is divided by 3. Um, but uh, the problem with this is 3 is actually kind of a fraction here. So let's move this over. This is what we have. You can't divide by fractions. So let's turn this into a multiplication problem with a fraction, which is something that we can do. So this is multiplied now by the reciprocal of 3 over 1. So we're going to reciprocate these. And that gives us 1 third. And from here, all we do is multiply this straight across. 
which would give us length times width times height times 1. So that's just length times width times height. But over here, you've got 2 times 3, which would give you 6. And this is the volume formula for a triangular pyramid. So there you go. And let's take a look at how this worked out for us. So yeah, there's everything right there. Now let's look at this triangular prism, uh, just, just to quickly go over this again. Okay? Now remember, we could call this our length, width, and height. And of course, this is already a rectangular prism that's cut in half. And uh, let's uh, just indicate that this is behind. So uh, let's go and make this a pyramid, though. So let's make this a pyramid. Alright, so this is our, now it is a triangular pyramid. Uh, the thing that's going to happen though on the homework and on other problems you'll see is that uh, notice the height for this prism was over here, but uh, it's no longer there anymore. So, where they're going to show that in the homework and in uh, other places is going to be right in the middle of that uh, pyramid. So I'll show it right in the middle. It'll be from the very point of the top and then it should come straight down and uh, it will be also dotted like this. Uh, you'll also see when you look at that height is you'll see a little box like that. That shows that it's a 90 degree angle just like it would have been for that rectangular prism and now the height is referring to this middle line here. But don't be fooled. Sometimes sometimes they're going to put this this line uh, somewhere more towards the bottom. Uh, again that, that just changes where the height is. So let's say, let's look on this one and they'll make this line over here. It'll show a 90 degree angle there. And so now this would be our height. This would be our, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that one wouldn't be affected. So let's, and now this, for example, would be our length. And this one would be our width now this is the height okay so again it's uh, length times width times the height but you do have to divide it by six so what type of pyramid is this okay well we know it's a pyramid because it has a point here at the top it's got lines going to each corner so we've got to look at the base to figure out what kind of pyramid it is well that looks like a rectangle to me so this would be a rectangular pyramid. Now notice the volume for this. Uh, this is a triangular pyramid over here and they're showing it as one-third and the B represents the area of the base. All right. So if you just wanted to figure out the area of that triangle uh, and that's where that, you'll divide that by 2 anyways because that's how you find the area of a triangle and then multiply it by the height. You'll still be in good shape. Okay, It ends up being the same thing as we went over already. Alright, so let's look at this example. Uh, first we got to figure out what kind of pyramid this is. Is it rectangular or triangular? Well, we can see that the base of this one is rectangular, so let's go and find the volume of this. Uh, we've got length times width times height, and in this case, we're going to divide it by 3. All right, so uh, let's look at what these values are. We've got 2.8, and we've got 
these are multiplication times 1.4 and all this will be divided by 3 and what do we get? Bam, about 4.2 and uh, we do need a label because these are all labeled and it's in inches but since this is volume it would be 4.2 inches cubed and it's fine the way the book has it. If you wanted to write that out, it's just a little bit more work. 4.2 cubic inches works as well. All right, here's an example. We'll go and take a couple minutes and give this one a shot. All right, let's go through this problem. There's no drawing here, but uh, notice it's given us height, length, and width, which is really all we need. Uh, the picture may help you, and if that's the case, just draw yourself a picture, all right? Uh, but in addition to that, we know it's a pyramid, and it's a rectangular pyramid because the base is rectangular. All right, so uh, let's say that you did want to draw a picture of that, all right? So let's uh, go and self give ourselves a picture. Just create a point up here, connect all of these. Bam, you got a pyramid, all right? Uh, maybe it would help you even if uh, these were not there, all right? So there's that. A rectangular pyramid. And it tells us it has a height of 9 centimeters. So in the middle here, we're going to have this line. It's got a 90 degree angle, and it is 9 centimeters says the length is of the base is seven centimeters the width is three centimeters and if we recall the volume for a rectangular pyramid is going to be length times width times height divided by three so let's go and look at that the length we said uh, is seven times the width which is three times the height which is 9 and we're going to divide this by 3 and that gives us 189 over 3 well let's go and finish that off so we got uh, just divide that by 3 that would give us 63 these are labeled so we've got 63 centimeters cubed done All right, finding the height of a pyramid really isn't a big deal either, okay? Let's just look at our formula. We've got volume equals length times width times height, and since this is rectangular, it's divided by 3. Uh, now, it gives us some, some of the values, though. So the volume, for example, shows up here that it's 90 cubic inches, all right? This is divided by 3, which is just three it's constant okay it tells us the length over here which we're going to say is nine we're going to multiply that by the width which is five and it's the height that we don't know so if we need the height there it is this is just like solving any other equation uh, so let's go ahead and finish this off and we'll simplify at least this fraction first so uh, the ninety is still ninety this is going to equal 9 times 5 is 45 times h, and this is divided by 3. So let's go and split this fraction up, 45 divided by 3, which would give us, so we have the 90 equals, we did the 45 divided by 3, which is 15, now this is times h. So... Final step in the switch and stay game, just going to divide by the coefficient of h in this case, which is 15. So you just take 90, divide it by 15, and what do we get? You're going to get 6. So 6 is the height. And if we look back at our original problem, it was in inches, so as it turns out, it's 6 inches. There's our answer.
All right, so this is a triangular pyramid. Let's go and figure out the height. Well, we know the volume is equal to length times width times height. And since this is triangular, it's going to be divided by 6. All right? So the volume, as we can see up here, is 44. This is going to equal it's our numerator. As all that's going to change, the denominator is still 6. And let's take our length, we'll call that 8 meters, multiplied by our width, which is 3 meters. And then we'll multiply that by the height, which is what we want to figure out. So let's take a look at what that gives us. You've got that uh, 44 equals 8 times the 3 is 24 times the h and this is divided by 6 so let's go ahead and figure out 24 divided by 6 which would give us the 44 equals okay we got 24 divided by 6 which is 4 times the h divide by the coefficient of h which in this case is 4 so we'll divide 44 by 4 and that is going to give us 11. 11 equals the height. Last thing we need on here is units, which it looks like it's meters. Done. All right, give these two a try and see what you can come up with. Alright, so let's take a look at this. So uh, here's the work for these. And notice here on this triangular pyramid that uh, it gives us two heights. Okay, you've got the height here and then we're finding the height. Well, don't say it's 21 inches because it's not, this 21 inches in height is not talking about the height of the pyramid. It's talking about the height of the triangle or the altitude of the triangle, uh, which is the base of the pyramid because it's triangular. So all you've got to do is take that height, 21, and multiply it by the 20. We're going to treat that height as though it were width, okay? And then it fits into the formula like this, okay? Otherwise, you take 20, multiply it by the 21 if you're going to find the area of the base, and then you're going to divide that by 2, okay? Because the 20 times 21 is the area of a rectangle or a parallelogram. And then you uh, have to divide that by 2 because it's taking that parallelogram and cutting it in half. All right, here's another problem. It's uh, an example in the book. Go ahead and look at this one and give it a shot. All right, take, your, take yourself a few seconds and see if you can give this uh, a shot, and then we'll have you check your answers. 